boom, we're there. Yep, we are there. Aloha, Charles. Hey, brother, what's Good up? Evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good night, then. Welcome, everybody. Oh, I got to get my thing going here. Gosh. How's the weather out there in the beautiful Waimea? It was kind of warm. Kind of warm today. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I thought it was just I thought it was just me. But no, I, um but I, I spent a good deal of the day out in Lihue today. It was very good. I wanna say uh thank you. Oh, we went off. What's up? Oh no, oh, we're we on. on. Yeah, okay. We are on, dude. I, we I, are I on. spent a good deal of the day. That that is me. That yeah. was me. Anyway, I want to say thank you to Paxi and to let her know that the banana bread was just perfect after being frozen in time for so many months. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's good. You know, like when they um, you, you go into a suspended animation. Yeah. When you, yeah. When you, when you use that uh, what cry, cryo, whatever that process, uh, when you freeze the bread uh, 20 below, zero yeah perfect perfect and then also today i, 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 I like to tonight i had some roll. chicken today uh my mother-in-law made some uh, corn chowder so I, I ate that for lunch today with some bread that was in there from 1978 okay in our cryo vac mm -hmm. pretty good well, stuff yeah when i see you leaving the camera and then i know where you went from <laughs> but i also like to say mahalo to Joanne Brune and her husband, who dropped, uh, they, I got to pick up, I tried their, uh, their butter, their different oh. array of butters. I mean, was, oh. and they, they are looking for you. They will get in contact with you with your, with your shipment of butters. They told me to tell you. So we like to say mahalo. Get the mahalo to butter. all the, all the folks out there who, uh, you know, not only on Kauai, but on Honolulu, uh, Maui, and uh, Big Island, Hawaii Island. Mahalo so much for your, your support. I know it's, it's we get some tough times ahead, but you know, today was a start, but just some things didn't make sense, but you know, they're opening back up. And I, I hope all the businesses take advantage and do what you have to do because you deserve it. You know, like I said before, all of you got closed down and yet the numbers are still climbing. So then we know that you weren't part of that numbers. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got, you got caught up with the, the mess there, but I hope and pray that, you know, things can turn around and uh, I hope they have leftover cares money to help these businesses because some of them will need that jump start. I know Kauai, we're okay, but thanks to our Mary Derek Kawakami taking a, a, a bold step, and doing what you got to do, you know, he he has, a, he has assembled a really good team that has the best interest of the people. He has, uh, everything is for, for the people of Kauai. And I appreciate that so much. So we're going to continue push forward, push forward. Yeah, well, I'm sure one day um, at some university, probably University of Hawaii School of Medicine, the psychiatric, uh, the psychology students going to analyze some of the decisions that were made um, in the last six, seven months and, and more to come. You know, I, I think we, we still got a lot of issues. So yeah, the business is going to open up. I'm assuming they're going to open up inner island travel very shortly. Uh, I did not watch an, an ounce of news today. I just did it. Um, I, I was just burnt out really. Uh, you know, it, it gets old every day listening to, to people that are, are, uh, more worried about um, politics than health. So I took a break today, man. I just, I took a break and, and uh, just try to stay off of Facebook. I went on a couple of times, but I just uh, tired of listening to these people uh, continue to say a lot of words, but don't really mean nothing. I mean, I, again, it goes, you know, with the business being open on Oahu, you know, it's it's the broad brush, Whew, you know, not not even giving a, a, a patootie about what what or what businesses can open safely and not. And and then, you know, they, they chug it along, 
on this October 15th uh, opening of Trans-Pacific Travel, I am afraid, you know, I am, I am truly afraid. And, you know, they're resting their, this, their, their, they're all excited because our numbers are dropping or the statewide numbers have dropped. But, you know, once, once we get these visitors coming in and, uh, you know, I, I worry. And, you know, it's just the result is not going to be good for the state, for the economy, for business. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I just, uh, I read a lot. I talk to a lot of people that, that are in the, in the know. And a lot of people share my, my uh, perspective. So we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow night, by the way, we'll have Dr. John Alderetti. He's going to come on and talk about you okay, Cho? Oh, jeez. I, 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 I thought I was having a COVID cough there, but no. Oh, okay. okay. My allergies. Um, tomorrow we'll have Dr. John Alderetti. Uh, he's going to be on to talk about uh, the options that we have that, that are available uh, as far as testing, you know, in addition to the one test. The one test is useless. We know that. The U one test is not going to pick up. We're going to lose a lot more than we pick up. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow night, the effectiveness of one test. And what is, what is the solution? How can we make this opening safe for all of us? So that'll be an interesting talk tomorrow. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow night. Tonight, we have Candidate Profiles 2020. Uh, we're going to have Jade Batad, uh, Wali Ali Batad. She's going to be starting off and she's in the waiting room right now. Followed by Mike Danduran and Addison Bulosan. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. If you have questions of these people, try to shoot them across. We'll try to monitor and try to catch what we can. Uh, but again, if, uh, if these guys are uh, an open book, reach out to them. Reach out to them and talk story with them if you, if you uh, need your questions answered. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring Jade in. Uh-oh, Patsy's not here. Our timekeeper just walked out. Uh-oh. Hi, Jade. Hi. Hi, Carl and Charlie. How are you? Uh, we're good. We're good. Aloha, and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, you know the rules. Uh, congratulations, first of all, for getting past the primary, making it to the general. Now, now the work, uh, you know, the hard work is there now. You got a few more weeks to go. Uh, how long more before the election? November, yeah? So November you, got, you, know, you got a little bit of time, but the time flies when you're having fun. So Yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> you do know the, the format. Uh, we're going to give you 15 minutes tonight. Uh, at two minutes left, you'll get this. And at one minute left, you'll get this. And then you'll get the map. So um, Patsy's not here. So I'm not sure she walked outside. So I'm going to set up my timer. So I won't be able to see comments. Okay. But <clears throat> we will. Are you ready, Jade? I am. Charles, are you ready, Charles? Yes, I am. Thank you so much, you guys. All right, that. you may begin. Hello, hi, everyone. My name is Jade Wayaleale Batad, and I'm running for a seat for co County Council for Kauai and Niihau. And let me tell you, this is harder than preparing a, a sermon for church. I, I literally went through at least eight pages of, of trying to get myself around this, this talk tonight. but. What came to me was what somebody said to me the other day, and they said, Jade, what sets you apart from the other candidates? And that's a hard question to answer because it means that we have to be able to, to puff ourselves up. In fact, Ian Costa said, I never ran for office because it, in order to do so, you have to be full of yourself. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, okay, I'm not full of myself, but it's really hard to hammer home who we are and what we are that sets us apart. And I mean, no disrespect to anyone else, but when I looked at me and my life and what I have and what I can bring to the table, what became apparent to me was, first of all, I think I'm the only candidate who has 10 years of county experience of working in the trenches as a county employee. Mayor Cavallo, yes, he, he is a county employee and has been as well, but 
more most of it in administrative and I was literally a worker bee in the trenches so that gives me a great understanding of policy and procedures and the daily operation of the county and government and it also gives me an understanding of partnerships and processes processes and each department and their functions and how they get things done and probably the most valuable thing that I that I was able to to learn in my time there was how things get done and the partnerships and between the county and the private sector and the county and nonprofits and forming friendships and partnerships in a way that is absolutely priceless. And, you know, I think that says a lot about who I am in my humble beginnings. Jade Y Ali Ali of Y Ali Ali Boat Tours, right? A 44 year experience of what? Working with tourism and people. And so as a child, a young child, I had this great wealth of social graces and social skills in interacting with people. And so really in my time in the, in the county, I forged friendships and partnerships that have, have really uh, treated me well over the course of these years. Uh, in fact, I was at Kay Beach the other day enjoying the absolute serenity. And there was a gentleman in the water, we struck up a conversation and he said, uh, his wife actually told me that he would go home and tell her, there's this girl that works at the county, every day she says hi and smiles at us. And they were working in a project in the sidewalks and in the parking lot. And then when he saw my name uh, running for county council, he said, we have to vote for her because she was always nice and sweet to us. And so I hope that that's what people see when they think of me or they, they see me. I hope they, they understand that, that really what I bring to the table are my skills in people and partnerships. And that's really important. I got into the county with Kaleo o Kauai, which was a community relations program um, forged by Mayor Baptiste. And from there, uh, you know, which was beautiful because I was working in communities and hearing the concerns and some of their, their core issues in the different communities. And I would take that back to the county, uh, to public works and the different departments within the county and negate some of the issues that they had and facilitate getting resolved in them. And that really allowed me the opportunity to go into all the different departments within the county and get to know people. And again, partnerships and people, right? And then I moved to public works admin and I worked in the county engineer's office. And there I saw the, the daily administrative uh, happenings to the county. People were being hired and, and all sorts of things were dealt in the hiring and maybe firing or disciplining of, of employees, as well as at the time when I got in, we were the largest, um, the largest department in the county. Parks was still under public works and so was OED, I believe. And so a very large public works department, there was a lot of facets to it that I learned. And I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to experience that and see the administrative side of the county and how it, how it flowed. And then I moved to engineering downstairs with Wally Kudo and later on Michael Moe. And that taught me a great understanding to the engineering permitting and policy side of, of engineering and the, the permitting plans and um, as well as engineering and flood and so many other aspects that we dealt with in engineering. So my county experience has really uh, trained me well to to be able to take a seat at county council, to understand people and partnerships. Um, and a tidbit of information, when my husband got hurt at the county and I was out, I had so much time donated to me to be out with him and an absurd amount of time, which still has me very, very humble and grateful till today to each and every person that donated time to me so that I could take care of my husband and be with him. Uh, the second thing that came to mind and who I am and what gives me an edge or what helps me to be the person I am and how will that correlate to being on county council is I am a minister. I'm a minister. So I know, I know what it takes to be a servant. I've been a servant my whole life. I'm a worker bee. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I, you know, I've, I've seen people at their greatest moments, their highs at weddings. I've done 
thousands of weddings here on Kauai for, for tourists as well as locals alike. I've seen them at their, their most joyous moments. And then I've, I've done funerals of all types as well. And I've seen people at their lowest. I've done many blessings throughout the county, for the county, for the Department of Water, for different uh, construction companies throughout the island. It gives me a great opportunity to have been present at many of the dedications to our affordable housing projects and to, to work with um, Makani Mayaba and some of the other affordable housing developers and all the things that they've done. Great work being done in the housing department. We just have more work to do, a lot more work to do. We have to continue the good work that's been done. Uh, I also, you know, I've been, I've been getting calls on a daily. We're, we're in a global pandemic and this time has been tough on people. I get calls on a daily from people who are contemplating suicide, going through divorce, really tough life crises, people that are having the most difficult time in their lives. And that has given me a greater understanding into, into the life of how people are trying to navigate and how they're getting through in the difficult moments of life. I too have gone through some of these difficult moments and I understand how, how tough it is and I understand what we have to do to just keep on keeping on, right? Um, it's taught me about empathy. It's taught me compassion. It's taught me understanding. I think I have a greater understanding of the social services and child family services like Bridges, Kauai, VASC, Women in Need, so many partnerships, right? And that's the beauty of who we are as a county because the county can't do it all by themselves. We need partnerships in the private sector as well as nonprofit. And it brings to mind uh, the Adolescent Treatment and Healing Center, which is so near and dear to my heart. I mean, so near. I, I drove up there today just to spend a moment and a time just to feel that, that hollow place. And so the community has existed for decades and the community need for this treatment facility ha has existed for decades. And the COVID-19 crisis and stress and restrictions has made it even greater. The need is greater now than ever before. Mental health issues, domestic violence, child abuse, and other behavioral health uh, parameters and issues are of growing concern. The purpose of this facility was to heal our keiki. The facility on Grove Farm land is an ideal location to do just that, to allow our children the opportunity to recover and heal. It was given by Grove Farm for the sole purpose of this Adolescent Treatment and Healing Center. And that needs to be the purpose that that building stands for. We, we cannot use it as a COVID quarantine location. We cannot use it for offices. I'm sorry. It was given and, the, and our keiki saw the land given for the sole purpose of healing them. We have to do as an elected official and friends of, and community members, everything in our power to ensure that that treatment center is up and running for our keiki and our families to heal today. We have a crisis. I was at a, at a meeting today and I met a woman who is a resident of Kamalani Kai. She has a master's degree in marine biology. She's a master's degree and is living at Kamalani Kai as a houseless individual. And I heard her story and it just ripped at my heart and pulled at my strings. And I tell you, James 1 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because trials produce perseverance, perseverance produces character, character builds faith. We know that our trials and tribulations will come. Do I know everything there is to know about Kauai and the issues at hand? No. My strength is I know people. I know partnerships. I know how to serve. I can bring people together. I can restore truth. I was watching the news and a guy uh, on the chamber floor, the yellow shirt, I forgot his name, wasn't really paying attention, but he out and out said, they don't trust us. And, and he's right. And I don't have a political pedigree. I am Jade, just Jade. But I am willing to put myself out there and be vulnerable to serve the people of Kauai. I know how to serve. Will I know everything there is to know? No. But can I dig in and get, get knowledgeable on certain things? Yes. I've taken a tour of the island. I've met with Maka'ala Ka'aumuana down on the North Shore. 
heard a lot about feral cats and about the historic uh, Hanale River, right? I got busy with Karen Diamond. You want to know anything about shoreline setbacks? Let me tell you, that lady knows her stuff. Fire, fire she is. I also got busy talking to Hanale and Kara, Kari Hormasura and Paulina, who works for the nonprofits down there with Joel Guy at Hanale Initiatives and the good work that they're doing in their rural community to make sure that there's connectivity, right? I also got uh, to spend time with the Chandler Ohana, Lahela at Limahuli and the Makas sitting under their tree. I um, also spent some time with Julie Souza in Koloa and Teddy Blake and Ryan Book. Very interesting is the things. I know how to do this, right? Kaleo o Kauai taught me how to be busy in the communities and listening to the, the matters at hand. I also uh, spent some time on a Zoom with Brad Rockwell and Jill's Levy, I don't know if I got that right, but Green Energy, right? Hearing about the good initiatives and the strides that KIUC is taking and Green Ener Energy and some of the things that they had to go through and the difficult process to making Green Energy happen. It was difficult, it hurt along the way, but now here we are at a time and place where we're leading the charge on, on greenhouse gas mitigation because we're at 60% when other islands are at 30 so we, we're doing the good work and sometimes that's a painful process but we have to do the work now so that it ensure that our keiki will have what they need in the future i also got to spend some time with george and ian costa the costa brothers to learn about planning some of our housing issues as well as economic development and tourism talked a lot about covid and the resort bubble and coming back to economy and you know i also met with the uncles in in uh in Kekaha, and let me tell you, that was that was a treat for me. I this is my first time running. I didn't even know that there was a band of uncles in Kekaha. You know, to be really honest, I'm sorry. I mean, no disrespect to them, but I didn't understand the process. And so when someone said mentioned their names to me, I was like, I would love to sit and talk to them, and I did, and I was educated and brought up to speed. I went on a walk and talk with Nalani Brune. We, we spent an amazing walk through the Marriott as I got to learn about Kupa'a Kauai and some of the economic initiatives that are happening. You know, so do I know everything there is to know? No. Will I bring to the table all that I can to do what's best for this beloved island that I'm so blessed to call home? Absolutely. I will fight for Kauai. I am Hawaiian. I am vested here. I will die here, God willing. And so I, I want to make a better life for my children and my children's children. And, you know, there's many other things that can be done. They talk about how we're going to move forward in this, in this global pandemic. We need jobs, food, and housing. And everyone's going to tell you how to do that. I don't have a magic wand up my sleeve and I don't have any tricks or any secret um, ideas that are going to catapult me over any other candidate. What I can say is that I'll get busy learning the grit and the stuff, the nuts and bolts of what I need to do as a county council member to do the best job I can for you. I will bring my lunch. I've walked this island several times over in the steps I've done, working on a better, healthier me, and I will show up for you, Kauai. I promise you that. Thank you. I'm Jade Waiali Ali Batad, and I'm running for county council. Thank you, Jade, with 13 seconds to spare. Amazing. Good job. Good job. All right. Uh, time goes by pretty quick, yeah? Yes, it That's does. 15 minutes. All right. Um, let me just start off by, by say, asking, you know, what do you see as the island's toughest problem uh, going in? You know, you've spoken to a lot of people, as you've just explained. But what, what do you think is the toughest challenge going forward for Koi? We are seriously going to have to work at getting back to business. And as you very well know, Mel, that's not going to be without its challenges because you and Charlie have, have brought that forum to our living rooms every single day, every night. You've educated us and brought a wealth of people to the table that have educated us on COVID and told us things that our elected officials actually should have told us and other people should have told us and been upfront about. And, and you know, sometimes that wasn't the case. And I think we need to, to figure out how we're gonna get people back to work, our kids back to school and do it in a way that's safe. I think the CDC brought to light today that there is uh, something called aerosol transmittal 
They put it on the website, apparently took it down because they didn't tell people about it. And so that, that brings in a whole new layer of how we proceed forward, right? And it's scary and we're all fearful. I have friends going back to work on the 15th that are very afraid of how to proceed forward, but we have to do it in the best interest of how we can do it safely. And that we've learned is by wearing our masks. We on Kauai are so obedient. We listen and that's why we've led the charge. And to that, I really, I got to give congratulations to our mayor. Mayor Derek Kawakami has done an excellent job, superior job for us here on Kauai as a leader. And you know what that says to me? It says that he loves Kauai. It says that he loves his community. It says that he loves me. And I, and I receive that and I, I thank him for caring about us in such a way. So we're, it's gonna take work. It's gonna be tough, Mel, and you guys know that. But we're gonna have to do it in baby steps. And then when things, if the, when and if things start numbers rising, we're gonna have to pull back and we're gonna have to uh, maybe get a tighter rein on it and slowly proceed forward. And it's gonna, it's gonna take some work. Charles? Nope, you're muted, Charles. Charles. Charles, see, you're mute. Okay. Yes, yeah, see, see, when you muted me, that's why you gotta you gotta unmute me. Okay. <laughs> and we're not saying the A word, right? We're not saying the A name tonight. <laughs> nope. And anyway, um, you know, financially we're 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 in a pickle right now. And uh, I guess the, the county's the county council's job is to worry about taxes, how to generate the revenues. That may not be a reality. What do you see as another source or a creative, I should say, I should use the word creative source to either, to, to stimulate Kauai's economy, whether it's to bring in sources that can infuse more economic possibilities or something along those lines, what's your, What's your plan if, if you had the opportunity, Jay? Charlie, I, you know, I, I don't think anybody has the answers to all of the solutions that we're going to be facing. We're literally going to have to get in with our boots and just start uh, working it, you know, and, and, and going at it. But I really think the way that we're going to make it through this, we can't, we can't tax ourselves out of this problem. We're not going to be able to, to raise property taxes on people right now because nobody has the means for this and so we're going to have to get creative i really believe that the way through this and out of this is with partnerships county government we can't do it by ourselves we're going to have to partner up with the nonprofits, partner up with the the private sector and and then we're going to have to look at creative ways and that probably means in certain areas we're going to have to pull back you know every home right the management of our homes the minute COVID happened, what did we do? The non-essential things got cut off, right? Jade stopped doing her nails. I mean, we just did what we had to do to pull back, tighten the purse strings. That's something that we're gonna have to do. And it's gonna take uh, working together and, it's, and we're probably gonna disagree a lot, but we're gonna disagree with love. We're gonna aloha ke kahi i ke kahi. And we're gonna work together and we're gonna do it the best we can for the betterment of everyone. So I don't, I don't know, I don't have the, the quick fix or an idea doesn't just come to mind, but I really believe that we're gonna do it together as an island. Yeah, no. he's gonna have a tough, tough challenge. I mean, the next, uh, the current fiscal year is, you know, is set, but the next, next two years, this count, this next council is gonna, gonna have their hands full. Um, you get to raise taxes or cut services, that's it, you know, and, and um, it's gonna be some tough, Tough decisions to make. Um, I know I heard you talking about the uh, Adolescent Treatment Center, and I know you've been active. You know, there is still some talk about legalization of marijuana at the state level. Uh, wanted to get your take on that. That would be the last question. You know, Mel, um, I am passionate to the Adolescent Treatment Center because every member of my family has gone through rehab. And I know I'm not alone. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I, I have a family that's, that has recovered from some of the difficulties that our KK are facing today as well. And they need those services. And if we go ahead and legalize marijuana, there's many, many 
um, pros and cons to the, the medical benefits of, of marijuana. And I realize that now with my husband, but at the same time, if we legalize it, we're going to have so many other issues that are going to come up. And I just, I can't stand behind that in a way, because when I look at, when I look at what I've gone through and what I've had to deal with, with my family, I believe that the only way we're going to get through that is by, by, by holding a tight grip on that right now. You, you know that we have problems with, with drugs. We have problems with, we have problems with kids and vaping. It's such a huge issue in our schools. And so we really need to look at how we're going to uh, protect our kids from any further, any further, um, addictions down the road and i just don't see legalizing marijuana as a fix to that i'm sorry don't apologize don't apologize thank you very much uh the time is up thank you so much jade uh thank appreciate you. you being here tonight um like i'm telling everybody work hard you got a few a uh, few months or whatever it is left go go work hard and uh and wish you guys well in the in the general thank you for having me and thank you so much you guys we appreciate you mahalo thank you Well, yeah. I tell you, it, it you know every time you hear a new candidate, a new person running, Charlie, it, it's the, the the choice gets more difficult. <laughs> the voters gonna have a tough time this year. Yep. You know, I, I I ran across that same problem years ago when I ran for um, a seat <laughs> at the Checkers and Pogo show. Just never have a seat big enough for me. I guess that was my problem. <laughs> You know, I'll never, I'll never forget my experience at the Checkers and Pogo show. It's amazing how that, that, that stays with you forever. So anyway, uh, Patsy's back, so she'll be able to uh, run the clock, and um, I can monitor your comments. Uh, I didn't get to see a lot of the comments, but if you have any questions that you want to ask, I, I see a lot of questions now, and and. Um, we kind of don't want to interrupt the flow of the candidate as they're as they're doing their presentation. So, uh, but if it's if it's uh, something that is in tune with what they're saying, we'll go ahead and ask them anyway. What's your thoughts, Charles? As far as uh, candidate one so far, Very, yeah, I mean just what we've seen so far from last night and tonight, and you know the the, the decision just gets harder. You know, from the first time they came on during the. Um, the primary and now going into the general it's uh whew. i mean you can tell that they're they got more into um, knowing the issues they got themselves entrenched into their communities and what are some of the the pitfalls in the respective communities you know it's not um uh, all one size fit all type of thing no they they it you can tell they went to specific areas within their communities and they got to sit down with probably the pillars of those communities and they got an earful and it it tells just by uh, what they're <laughs> talking about now as opposed to the last time so i'm glad for that i mean it's it, they're doing a good job yeah i i, I think you 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 hit it right in the head um last night we had felicia she's an incumbent so she's much more versed in the issues but Wally and Ed both and Jay tonight, big difference from, from the first time we did this before the primary right. and tonight. All three of them, all of them have yeah. uh, definitely, like you said, uh, they're more aware of the issues now. So No, they just, uh, they stepped up, you know. I, I think it was mentioned before that, you know, if you happen to make it into the general, you're going to have to step up. You have to take it, you know, you have to bring in your A game and... <laughs> Boy, they, they exceeded that, you know, watching the forum last night and tonight with our first candidate here. All the way around, they exceeded it as far as I'm concerned. So tonight we have no incumbents. We have Mike Dan Duran, who's, I'm going to be bringing him right now. He'll be starting. Uh, and, and we have Addison Bulasan. So tonight we don't have any incumbents. That's just the way, again, that's how it fell. Uh, they were, again, scheduled as they responded. So And, and uh, also let them know that they none of them got questions like how we did the the representatives none of the candidates for county council they were not uh prompted prior to 
their appearance. So they're they're getting it raw. And like I said, so far, so good. I'm very, very pleased at how they're answering. And don't forget, folks, if you can share tonight's uh, segment of the Mel and Charlie Facebook Live, we appreciate it. We want it to get across so the candidates themselves can get the exposure to uh, many people who, who may not be uh, direct on our feeds here, but can be on your feed as well. So uh, for those of you who are watching, and if you can share this or make a watch party out of it, we surely appreciate it. Thank you. Bingo. All right, we'll bring in Mike so we can go over the rules. You know, the other thing I really like about all of our candidates, Charlie, is okay. they're on. Uh, in fact, our, they're all early. As well. So yeah, for those of you who are watching, anything Mike, I think you got to um, turn the volume on your Facebook Live. If you have your Facebook running on another device, just turn the volume down. Got it. It's off. It's off. <laughs> oh, usually I'm on. Just turn the volume down. Hey, welcome back, bro. Welcome back. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing a few minutes with us tonight. I'm getting all my stuff together here. Uh, you know the routine. Again, congratulations for uh, getting past the primary and getting into the general. Now it's now it's real. Yeah, and it's a great, uh, great honor. The work begins. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so utilize this this uh, opportunity to share your views and your ideas with the group. We have a lot okay. more followers now than we did the first time around. So yeah. Um, Two minutes. You have 15 minutes in your first run. Okay. Uh, two minute warning, one minute warning, and then the power. That Got is it. too late. Uh, right. Timekeeper, are you ready? Yeah. The time starts now. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, aloha, everyone. My name is Mike Dandran, running for County Council. Um, what I wanted to do is uh, start off a little bit about my background, and then I'll, I'll talk about the issues that are concerning our island. Um, my, I am, uh, my mom is Japanese. I was born in the Philippines. Uh, my mom is Japanese. My dad were, uh, is a U.S. Army. And uh, once, uh, after I was born in the Philippines, we moved to Japan where my brother and sister were born. And then we moved to Hawaii. I grew up in Makakilo, uh, the old Makakilo, uh, the real local, this is the old school. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up very local on, on that side of the island, on the west side of Oahu back in the day. Um, I was raised Catholic. I went to all Catholic schools all my life. Uh, I went to St. Louis High School, played football there. Um, while I was at St. Louis, uh, and I'm going to admit to you guys, uh, Charlie and Mel, and probably the rest of the world, uh, some things that I haven't uh, told any of my close friends. Um, when I was at uh, St. Louis High School, I, uh, I took Hawaiian language with uh, Mr. Lake, Lake Kikumu, um, and uh, I danced hula for the Cows of Maros. Uh, for two years um, with the, the gentleman of Nakamale. Uh, I wasn't a very good dancer, but it was, it was something that was an amazing experience. Uh, and I also had a, a Hawaiian uh, ukulele trio called Ha'aheo o Makaha. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, the, the, the thing I remember about it, not only the fact that I wasn't, much, much, I wasn't a very good ukulele player or singer, but um, we got to uh, hang out and jam with uh, the Makah Sons of Ni'ihau. And so I got to meet Skippy and Israel and Moon. And, uh, you know, just being in that kind of an energy was something that I'll never forget. And I think that really kind of cemented my love for Hawaii. Uh, I worked at the uh, Hilton Hawaiian Village when I got out of college at the University of Notre Dame. I uh, moved to Kauai to work at the Kauai Hilton in sales. And that was my experience with the, the tourist industry. Uh, it wasn't my, my thing. Uh, I love the island, but I wanted to do something. And, and uh, because I couldn't sing or play an instrument, I became a DJ and I ran a, a, my Custom Sounds Kauai, which many of, you, many of you are familiar with. Custom Sounds Kauai does mostly DJ work. Uh, and the reason that Custom Sounds Kauai is important is because it allowed me to plug into the island and you know for the first for the 33 years that i i've been djing I, i've done thousands of baby birthday parties and i've done thousands of graduation parties and and weddings and you know being a part of the most important part of people's lives the rites of passage has has really endeared me to the island and to the people i mean i 
I, I, uh, I was thinking about it the other day. I actually, uh, Sukanoha just had an anniversary with Saul and I remember I was their, their DJ. It was one of the first gigs I've ever done. And that was at Smith's Tropical. So happy anniversary Sue and Saul. And, uh, I also did Luke Evslin's wedding and, uh, he's one of our councilmen. So, and I did all the Evslin's family. So, you know, it, it just, I just feel so connected to the Island and, you know, that in itself, uh, I, I just love the island, but I, I wanted to do more and I wanted to give more. And so uh, I looked at uh, the county council as a way of doing that. So let's talk about some of the issues. What I realized after looking at the issues is that we're, they're, all, they're all connected. You know, the food security with the agricultural agriculture, with uh, climate control or climate change and our, our landfill. Uh, what... I gravitated toward, and, and I think all of our candidates gravitate, gravitate towards something. I gravitated towards the, the fact that, you know, we, because of this pandemic, I was able to look to the past and see what Kauai was like before traffic, before rampant tourism. And, you know, talking to people, it just seemed like that was something that we, are, we were missing and, and we kind of strayed from our path. I, I don't want to see Kauai become another Waikiki or Maui. Kauai is, is unique and independent. And I really think that we need to preserve that. When the pandemic hit, a lot of people um, uh, were able to, to create uh, a, a food uh, source using CSA boxes. And we were giving away thousands of pounds of food to people, supporting, supporting them, delivering it to their door. And that was a great thing. And, you know, the, the Hawaii Food Bank and all of that was, was amazing. But I realized that we can't keep that going. It's not sustainable. You know, the money is eventually gonna run out and then what? Our farmers are gonna not have anything to sell to because no one's gonna have uh, the ability for them to sell to. There's not gonna be any restaurants, hotels are closed. So I believe that, um, you know, working towards a sustainable, uh, uh, sustainable, business model is what we needed to do. And so I believe that, you know, the food hub concept is a way of doing that. There's a bill out, the Senate bill uh, 2722, which is exactly that, is a pilot program to create food hubs on all the islands where people can go online, order the food, the food's pro uh, aggregated to our farmers, and then it's delivered to the people. But this is different because it's not free. You are gonna pay for it, but the money stays on the island. Uh, I want to, you know, only, I just want to read something real quick that kind of caught my attention. Several studies have shown that when you buy from an independent locally owned business rather than a nationally owned business, significantly more of your money is used to make purchases from other local businesses, services, service providers, and farms, continuing to strengthen the economic base of the community. And I believe that wholeheartedly. You know, we cannot wait for tourism to turn around. This is a wake-up call that we have uh, the ability to say, hey, let's turn around and support ourselves using our farms and supporting our farmers. I believe that our farmers need to be, they need to be supported. We need to uh, provide them land, inexpensive land. We need to provide them free water and we need to provide them housing exemptions so that they can get their farm workers on their property. Did you know that only 15% of the state, state, state's ag land is being used for agriculture right now. And that's only 22,000 acres of which less than 2% is being used for food crop. So less than 2% of our island is being used for food crop right now. Can you imagine if we started increasing that percentage and supporting our farmers so that they can start uh, growing larger quantities of food for our island? Uh, I wanna talk about uh, there's this thing called the papaya story. And I'll, let, me, let me do it real quick. Here's two papayas, right? This papaya was picked in Mexico two and a half weeks ago. It was put on a truck, delivered to the warehouse, shipped on a boat to Oahu, and then shipped on a boat to Kauai. And then uh, it was put in a warehouse and then it was delivered to a big box store on the island. This papaya traveled 3,500 miles. This papaya right here was picked yesterday from Olawa, but from a farmer that I know, and I, I, he gave it to me today and it traveled 15 miles, I think, uh, you know. So Kauai, 
They're exactly the same, but which papaya would you buy? Which papaya should you buy? And that's the question that we got to ask ourselves. You know, maybe this is more convenient and, you know, we're buying a bunch of other stuff. We'll just buy this papaya too from Mexico. But we really should be buying this papaya. This is the one that we need to support right here because this represents Kauai. This re represents us being sustainable and not dependent on tourism or God forbid another pandemic happens or they raise the, the shipping costs so high that we can't even afford incoming produce. Right now, 80% of our produce is being shipped in. Why? Why can't we buy from our local farmers? They get plenty. So you can tell that I'm, I'm a little passionate about it. Uh, I feel that sustainability should be the driving force for planning our future. Let me say that again. Sustainability should be the driving force for planning our future. Buying local supports ourselves. That's one of the issues I want to talk about. The other, and this is kind of tied into the same thing, is our environment and our landfill, right? If our farmers are using our, our land, they're reproducing, they're, they're, they're tilling the soil, and it's good for the aina. Do you recognize this? This is a package that the produce that comes in from the mainland or Oahu comes in. This is 80% recyclable, but it was recycled somewhere else. Not here. This is going into our landfill. By the thousands, it's not recyclable. Unless, unless we focus on making it recyclable. The only way we can do that is to create a materials, materials recovery facility. We already have the location. We already have an uh, AE done for it. It's just a matter of pulling the, pl pulling the trigger and making it happen. So, and you know, the funny thing is this was in the 2018 uh, Kauai general plan but it, it was it, it never ne never fruitioned and now we're facing a three-year deadline on our current our current landfill and what are we going to do i mean we have options we can spend a lot of money we can mine and line the old one uh, which would last another 30 years but we're not really recycling we're just putting stuff more stuff on the land in the landfill and in 30 years or 25 years the future of Kauai is going to have to deal with that problem so what I say is, hey, environmentally and landfill wise, even, even just, just sustainability, the concept of shipping a, pap a papaya 3,500 miles versus getting it from up the street, that's what we got to start thinking, Kauai. We got to start thinking not convenient, but with our hearts and using our dollars to make that choice. I want to applaud KIUC. They have passed the 50% mark, 56% actually, renewable energy. We are leading the state and that I'm so proud that we are doing that. And we can also do Smart Hub now where you can actually look at how your power is used on your phone. And you can decide when you should be using more or less power that makes more sense. You could save money that way. And I, I believe that you know hydro, solar and biomass they are, are going to be our way of getting to 100%. Now, we're supposed to get 100% at, 12, at 2050. I know that we're going to be way earlier than that. And we're going to be the leader. You know, Kauai, we are leading by example. You know, I'm really proud of be, to be a part of that. And I think that's really the, the whole reason that we're all here, because we're proud to be on this island. We're, we're, we're fighters. I mean, j just we're just really proud to, to be a part, be called Kauaians. So... You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a politi politician and uh, I know that, you know, everybody's saying, oh, you cannot stop the rental cars on the island. And I know that the rental cars were just shipped off. I think it was a couple of days ago. And I, I got to tell you, I smiled because I've been watching these cars pile up in the different parking lots, getting old and rusty. And I was wondering, what are they going to do with these things? Because I'm really glad they're not on our streets. The fact that they're gone is, I think is important that we need to make sure that they don't come back. And you're like, well, how do we, how do we do that? And, you know, honestly, I don't know. But because I'm not a, not a, uh, a politician, I'm gonna ask the question, why not? 
what can we do? Why can't we decide how many rental cars are on Kauai? Why can't we, I don't know, let's call it a quality of life bill and, and, and work on maybe changing the laws because if we're gonna do something dramatic and different, this is the time to do it. This is exactly the time that we need to make a difference. Uh, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna move quickly. Um, uh, I wanna say, hey, tomorrow on, uh, on Hoike 53 and KKCR uh, at 5.30, there's gonna be a forum on climate change. I believe all of us should be watching that. I think that you're gonna see a lot of things. I wanna uh, thank uh, the com uh, Community Coalition of Kauai, the uh, Kauai Climate Action Coalition and Surf Riders Foundation and Zero Waste Kauai for sponsoring that. Uh, Kauai, I honor the past and I'm committed to the future. Give me a chance to fight for you so that we can get things done. Mahalo and aloha, this is Mike Dandaran. All right, Mike, thank you very much. All right. Powerful, powerful. Um, we were just saying how, how all of the, the non-incumbents have really uh, stepped up the game since the last time you guys were on and uh, it's, it's pa nothing wrong with passion, nothing wrong with passion. But you know, Mel, the, the, I, <laughs> I've been kind of saying the same thing, same thing since the first, the first uh, um, Zoom meeting with you guys, except I, I, I just put it in better words now. I just understand how to, how to say it a little bit better because I was just so excited and nervous. And thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to, to share this with everyone. This is really important, what you guys are doing. I think what you guys are doing uh, is by far the most important thing for our island to know what's going on. You guys are telling the truth. You're telling it straight and you tell it on a daily basis. So I applaud you guys. Congratulations and thank you for your service and for what you are doing for Kauai. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Charles, you had any questions for Mr. Dandaran there, sir? Yes. You know, you, you did mention about the landfill. Yeah. And right now, you know, there's this, uh, I guess there's a, a, a sort of a bad taste especially for the people on the west side because it's getting yeah. higher it's getting higher by the by the week yeah, yeah. not getting any lower yeah so if you were elected okay if you were elected i'll give you an opportunity to serve the people of Kauai. would you attempt again to put a landfill somewhere else on this island and if so where would you want it to be placed well you know, the, the fact that there already is a landfill there, um, oh. it makes more sense to fix the one. There's two landfills. There's an old one, and then there's the one that's being used right now. And the one that's old is the one that's leaking and doing damage to the land and to the ocean. That landfill can be fixed, and it can be mined, which we can actually get, get some value out of it. And it can get, get an, us another 30 years. So rather than, you know, Rather than destroy another section of, of area on Kauai, and and I, I you know I, I I'm sorry for the for our west side, but you know there already is a landfill there, so let's just use what we have, fix it, and that way we can get rid of the old the new one, the one that's the one that's running out of time, and create the and fix the old one. And in the meantime, we start looking at ways of of mitigating the amount of trash that's going into the landfill whether we charge more for the people that are bringing in the garbage and the trash and the plastics, because really plastics is the problem, or we create a, a way of recycling it so that we can break it down to a point where we can actually sell it. And that is something that they're doing in Oahu and we can get it done here. And we've already started working on it. I don't know why they haven't followed through on it. And that's something that I'd have to find out once I'm in council. Okay. The, um pandemic is going to leave a, a major fiscal impact on on this island I mean, it's, it's going to be tough i think you talked a lot about i really enjoyed your presentation about the sustainability and and taking care of our farmers uh but there the county is going to have to raise revenue or generate revenue to pay the county's bills uh you know all the pri all the sales tax and tat tax all of that you know the business taxes all go to the state yeah. So uh, how do you see the county staying afloat uh, in the next next few years? Um, nobody wants to raise taxes, but 
how realistically how do we how do we pay the bill how do the how does the county pay the electric bills the water bills and all of those things uh going forward with with all the revenues being being cut well you know mel uh i haven't been in the council yet i don't know i i'm not familiar with how all that works however i do realize that you know in, in order to to be good stewards of of Kauai, we have to make sure we don't go default on our bills. Um, we are all struggling. Everyone is. We're all figuring out ways to save money. We are working efficiently as possible. We are not getting our nails done anymore. Uh, we are uh, looking at ways to make money ourselves on a, in, a different, in, in a different fashion because that's what Kauai does. We're resilient. We don't give up. You know, what I say is that Eventually, we'll get to sit down and, and deal with each problem. And each problem, as it come up, comes up, we're going to have to look at what is the most important. You know, what is the most critical thing that we cannot do without? What can we do without and get and maybe push to another time or push push further down the road? Because this is a this has never happened ever in the in the world on this level before. And so none of us really know what, how to handle it. But if we can be fiscally responsible and be aware of where the money's going and we tighten our budgets and we tighten our belts then i think we should be able to get through at least if we can get through the next year i believe that we can start building it back and i know that tourism's you know i'm not against tourism i think tourism is really important because that that brings money into the island what we need to do is keep that money here and you know there are a lot of let's call them COVID refugees is what I heard the term is people are, there are families that are moving here, you know, 40, 50 families from what I heard already. And, you know, if they come here and they respect the island, we cannot say no because that's against the law. If they, if they come here and they plug in and they pay their taxes and they, they put their kids in the school and they buy locally, then, you know, that's going to help our, our hold the, the whole park raise ourselves up, especially on Kauai. We've, we've got a, you know, our environment is our economy. So if we can use our environment to support our economy, then if we can just get past the next year, I believe we'll be fine. We will be fine. All right, Mike. Well, thank you very much. That time went by quick. Um, you know, we uh, wish you well, work thank hard, you. keep, keep working hard, keep spreading the word and um, wish you guys all the best, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Mel, Charlie, thank you so much. And uh, God bless you guys. Thank you. Likewise, my friend. Take care. All right. Oh. Ooh, that papaya. What a what an analogy. Yeah, the papaya. The Mexican papaya and the Moloa papaya. Well, you know, there's 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 farmers. Like I said the last time. You know, the um, land was given to a farmer to grow as much ginseng as he wanted. The land was given. He lasted maybe about a month. And it's, it, you know, farming is hard. We, we know that. It's not an easy job. Um, you need water, but you're going to need somebody to keep those, those sources of water open so the water can flow from Malka to Makai. You know, over time, it shortens up, it gets backed up with silt. You get rubbish in there, somebody has to go and clean it. And it's not an easy job. I I know one figure, ooh, was about a, a million dollars a year just to keep the West Side aquifers open. That, that's a lot, that's a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's where the state's gotta really, really step yep. up and, and, you know, to- I mean, um, you know, we, we want things you know, if everything was ideal and only pay for water, yeah, but you know, that's now more so than ever, things gonna have to be shared. I think, you know, the public private partnership is a, uh, is good. I, I, I know there's a lot of private that wants, but again, you know, you have to see what some of the private motives are, right? It's okay to get involved, but if you're gonna try to handle the whole ball of wax, then maybe the intent is not really Pono, right? So yeah. we just got to see what happens. We got to see what happens. I, I think you hit the nail on the head, though. Um, when you talk about the land, you know, we, we got to be, the government's got to be able to give, provide some cheap land and some 
some very cheap water. I mean, uh, otherwise it, it cannot be done. The the land, the price of land here is just too high. The price, the price of water, and then so it's a decision. It's a gov. It's a decision the government's got to make. If you want to see farming uh, advance here, then it's going to come with some costs. I love these new ideas. I love it. I love it, man. Awesome. All right. Well, we got um, Addison, Dr. Addison Bulasan next to wrap up tonight. I wonder if he's going to sing a song again. He did a song the last time, right? Uh, he's just telling me uh, he got to hold down his energy. Last time was a little bit too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's bring him in. They're much more relaxed in this format than being on the stage with, uh, you know, a bunch of people in the in the audience and lights and there he there he is he's got his guitar go for it bro let's play play a tune for real i only get 15 minutes bye right, bye i can afford the time okay uh. hang on that's up to you now totally up to you and i'm not forcing you hang on <laughs> are we ready uh, let's do All it. right, buddy. Uh, Your time starts now. There you go. Okay. You got two oh. minutes left. Go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can do the we can do the song uh, later. No. Okay, here we go. Uh, Scotty, start him over. Reset, uh, reset, reset. Uh, reset. Uh, no. reset. <sighs> okay, here we go. One, two, three, boom. Here's the deal. You know what? That two minutes is going to be very important. The song will be later. Anyone that wants a song, I'll put my phone number. I'll sing you a song anytime. Um, I'm Addison Bulosan. I am your Kauai County Council candidate. And uh, generally, I'm happy-go-lucky, and I look at things half full. I'm an optimist. But you're going to get, for the next 20 minutes, uh, the angry, mad, uh, frustrated, um, heartbroken, um, depressed, and anxiety-filled Addison. You're not going to get the nice one now because I've been in the trenches for the past six, uh, five months, six months, helping as much people as possible. And it is insane. Okay. It's insane. I'm on the ground helping everywhere possible. And it's hard. <sighs> So let me just tell you a story first, okay? 1986, this boy was born on Kauai, raised by a good Filipino family. Grandparents moved to Hawaii, two years old, on a boat, three months on the water, trying to make a different life for themselves, reach Hawaii. Raised their family, brought me up, instilled the Hawaiian values, the Filipino values in me in my childhood spent days helping local people in community service. I mean, I was the little kid in, in these little volunteers, beach cleanups since five years old, all the way until I was 18. Born and raised on this island, graduated from Wilcox School, Kauai High School. And you know what, throughout the whole time that I was home, all of you watching, all you parents, grandparents, all the elders, you know what you guys was telling us? He's telling us, go. Go mainland, go somewhere, learn, get the education you can, get experience, then come back and help. Come back and give back. Well, six years, I came back home, guys. And with the grace of all of you, you welcome me back home. I opened my office. And for the last six years, I've been helping you as a chiropractor, helping you with the other businesses and the nonprofits I've been part of. And I've been raised this way. And now that I'm home and everything has just got turned upside down six months ago, you know what happened to me? Flip. That stuff you guys was putting inside me, in my heart, to help people as much as possible, anywhere possible, it clicked. And I've been working 14 hours a day, every day, wherever I can. Because I see you guys suffering. I see you guys having a hard time and there's 198 people watching right now. And I just want you to know for the next 15 minutes, if I haven't earned your vote yet, I hope in these next 15 minutes, I'll earn it. Cast one of those seven votes for me because there's no one in the council. Well, they will all say it, but I will work as hard as possible to make sure that every single one of us can get out of this. 
in this past six months, recently, I've already helped three close friends. Who attempted suicide. So I know the deal. I know the hardship. So let me just kind of break down what I'm going to be working on, what I've been working on, what I've been working on right now. And if elected, I'm going to continue working. And let me be straight up with all of you. Here's the deal too. If you don't elect me, I'm still going to work hard for you guys. Regardless, I'm still going to serve on the nonprofits. I'm still going to help in the businesses. We're going to still give back because it's not like all of a sudden I decided to help. So you're watching because you're wondering how I'm going to help, what kind of decisions I'm going to be making on the council, how are we going to be able to leverage the county council so we can help all of you, all of us. My top priority is the economy. It's the businesses. It's all the small mom and pops. It's all the people who are employing people right now. We have almost over 20% people unemployed right now, family, friends, people we care about. And you think this is going to go away? And no, the county council will not solve it like a magic silver bullet, but it's one big piece in it, okay? So what is, what is important, the county council has one of the biggest leverage. One, the county council looks at and approves the budget. The budget is gonna get smashed. People telling you, yes, the TAT tax is gonna get hit, GET tax is gonna get hit, but none of you guys are looking at all the state funded positions that are filled by the county. How many of you guys know that there's four positions in the uh, licensing department that's funded by the state or that DLNR that manages all the beaches? So when state loses money and they can't fund those positions, who are they gonna drop out? Neighbor islands, who has to pick that up? County, how, how many uh, uh, people running right now talking about that? I'm working right now with the county departments. We're looking at the budget. I'm working with um, community experts and people in each category that we're looking at to make sure we can make the county budget as efficient and effective as possible. There's certain policies that we can put in place to make sure that uh, we protect and shelter the county council, uh, not the county council, but the county government to function the way it functions. And also we need to look at things that we just got to cut because we can't run anymore. We just, we can't be doing payroll by hand. If it's taking 500 people to do the payroll and that's costing us money, that can't happen anymore. Efficiency has to happen now. That's what I'm working on in when we're looking at uh, the economy. A big piece of that county council um, is focusing the dollars in that budget to make sure that we're funding things that make a difference. So we need to look at our office economy de development um, uh, our department. And I've been working with them for the past six months trying to get people back to work. They just launched Rise to Work. We brought on 14 people who had been out of work for the past five months to the Rice Street Business Association. I mean, we're doing the work now. Imagine if you let me, if you, you hired me, if you elected me, I could do more. I, I'm just limited right now. So OED, we make sure that, that it's well-funded, that we're making sure that we enable them with the tools needed to make sure that we can help all the businesses. Really, it, it's looking at uh, allowing OED to help businesses innovate. Uh, we're talking about looking at um, streamlining broadband internet, making sure that businesses are able to look at e-commerce to reach global economies. I mean, we learned through COVID that uh, many industries can go from not just selling online to everyone here, but reaching a global market. And we, that's how we can get, get those dollars back. Even though the tourism is down, we still can get those dollars back. We can sell that. And it's really important for us to understand. <clears throat> the other piece of if the economy is um, raising revenues. And no, I'm not going to tax you guys on, on property. We don't have to do it that way. The way that we can do it is looking at other revenue sources. So I've been working with our uh, community experts and a, a few um, council members uh, to look at um, introducing a non-resident non -resident parking fee. So this will be for uh, um, visitors so that we can increase revenues so we can focus those dollars towards places that are going to get hit the most, the beaches, the parks, where DLNR is, is, is trying to take care of. Those are the places that are gonna lose money. So we need to find money and get, get that back. Another thing is non-resident, uh, non-resident, that's right, non-resident, I'm not raising taxes on you guys, 
non-resident toll fee on county roads. Now this one's a little bit tough, so that's why I'm working on it now with a few experts, um, because uh, where we're gonna lose a bunch of money is, is our general money. And, and we're, how we're gonna fix the roads. You guys, you know how important that is, right? Transportation is the biggest thing. If we're losing GET and that 0.05% that was going into our, our transportation, we gotta get that money back because we gotta keep fixing these things. And so uh, we're looking at trying to figure out if we can do a non-resident toll fee to generate some funds so we can focus on, on uh, making sure that, uh, that we can get that funds back and pay, pay back and keep fixing our transportation. So economy is the most biggest piece that I, I want to make sure that we uh, we take care of. Um, and then, I mean, the second highest priority is homes. Here's the deal. Everyone watching right now, if you're under 40, the likelihood that you own a home is very un, it's unlikely. Like it's like 50%. Like raise your hand if you own a house. I, I don't own a house. And that's the local people that are getting priced out of the island. I am getting priced out of the island. Your kids are getting priced out of the island. Your grandkids are getting priced out of the island. And if you want help with the solution, you need to throw us in the mix so we can help. Think out of the box, work a little bit harder, connect things in a different way. That's exactly what we're doing. So on the home side, I'm looking at trying to streamline the county processes to make home development a more uh, fluid situation. Um, I want to enable more public and private nonprofit collaboration. And so that's why I'm already talking with your um, Kauai Realtor Board President. I'm already talking with, and it's just not like talking, hey, hi, I'm Madison, let's talk story. It's like, all right, what is the pieces that we need to put in place right now? Because guess what? We probably need to make this decision soon like January, if you guys hire me as your new county council, like these things has to happen now. So that's a couple of things that we're working on in housing. Um, I'm super excited for those things. Um, again, like I said, if you don't elect me, fine. We'll give these ideas to someone else that get elected and they can get it done and hopefully they get it done. Um, but let me just say, if you elect me, I'll make sure it gets done, okay? That's how it works, right, Mel? You don't just like pass the buck on to somebody and be like, oh, you figure it out. No, you show up and you do the work. So I know I got like, I don't know, five more minutes and uh, don't get me wrong, environment is important to me. Uh, there is other pieces like climate change, which is super important to me. Uh, so, so you know what I'm doing. I'm actually working with the experts to, to work on the solutions. There's already solutions in place. so. Uh, the big piece right now is just getting it in, working out the, the, the problems and making sure that it effectively does what it's supposed to do, these policies, these ideas, and then put it into place. It, like the action needs to happen. So with my last four minutes, uh, I think it's four minutes, right? Patsy is four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, something like that. Um, I just want to break it down of what I've been doing so far so you know what you're going to get when you vote for me, okay? This is what you're going to get from me. Okay, my office, the specific chiropractic centers is on Kauai, and I have one on Maui. We've lost 50% of our revenues because uh, people can't afford care, but it didn't stop us from helping people. We put people on uh, free care plans. We put people on deferments. We've continued to take care of people. We understand the challenges we made at adaptations. We donated over $10,000 in this time. And it's not like I got a bunch of money, guys. I'm, I'm almost broke. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's nice to tell you guys this, but I know people need help in, they are in tougher situations than me. And, you know, the one thing that people always, uh, my parents always tell me is that, hey, you got to help the people who are less fortunate. You can eat Addison shit. Give someone food because you don't have to eat three meals. Sorry, I swore. Oh, I just realized. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> sorry. I'm really sorry. But that's, I mean, so if you're talking about food, you know, I've, I'm on the advisory board of the Hawaii Food Bank. I volunteer twice a week at food distributions. Every Saturday, I'm in Kekaha from 2, 4, 2 to 4 p.m. You recognize me with the mask, right? I come to your house with my mask and I give you food through the nonprofit that's making that happen. Uh, on Thursday, we're gonna be at Vidina Stadium with the Hawaii Food Bank and we're gonna be distribu distributing over 400 meals. Actually, it's, a, it's like a meal and something else. Um, 
So I've been volunteering at the food banks. I've been down and I know, I know you guys are having a hard time. That's why I'm showing up. I'm at the farms. I'm in the ground planting, like literally with these guys and trying to find them money. You can talk to the guys in Waimea Valley. We found them a chipper. Now they'll be able to cultivate more land and that's more kalo for everybody, right? That's the little stuff at RSBA, Rice Street Business Association for 19 weeks consecutively, every single day, we bring on a musician. We pay the musician because musicians have been out of work for over six months. We've been able to get them some money and for two hours, we promote local businesses, trying to save them. And it breaks my heart that we lose businesses still. <sighs> one minute. Here's the one minute. Here's one minute, guys. And one sentence. I'll make a deal with every single one of you. You cast one vote of the seven for me. Just cast one. You don't need to do whatever. Just one out of the seven. And I'm going to turn it up. Like nobody has ever turned it up. Guess what? I don't have kids. I don't got a girlfriend. I live with my parents. Guess what I'm going to do? Work. So let's go. Bring the questions. Oh, sorry, Charlie. Sorry, I just had press your damn mute. I was trying to unmute you. There you go. OK. Oh. First of all, no need to apologize. You know, I wasn't going to say nothing, but I read in the comments and, and everybody forgave you. I uh, love the passion, man. I love the passion. Let me just start because uh, you, you hit on a lot, of a lot of things with a lot of force. But, you know, one of the things I, I in the charter, there's a, there's a requirement for this county to have an auditor. Yep. And this council and this administration not very uh not pursuing that um is that something that you would pursue because i know i've been hearing that they're actually thinking about taking it all out of the charter but is that something that you would pursue to help with the efficiency of the county yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Any business understands that you gotta be able to look at feedback to understand how to make improvement. You know, you you that's like a sorry. You there's no like if ands or buts with that. Like you look at nonprofits. They nonprofits get audited every three to five years based on the grant that they receive. I get audited. I audit myself as a small business to make sure that I have efficiencies. If you don't audit yourself, you don't know what's wrong. And I've been auditing the county council, like not counting out the council budget on my own. If we had an auditor, that thing would be like, you know, we could see those things. And so I, I don't understand the, the grasp of what was the challenge the last whatever. I know you were championing that and I would love to connect more so I can understand the history, but that is part of creating more efficiencies. Is understand, you gotta get feedback, right? You cannot be like, Oh, I like fix this thing, and you don't even go look at what what is wrong, right? Like you I mean that's what that's what the auditor does. Thank you, Charles. Okay, you know I'm really excited because I want to talk to Addison right now because I want to really go fast, Addison. <laughs> but I'm gonna throw this at you. You're a business owner. Yeah. Okay. What do you find as a fault that the county has towards businesses? Because we hear this all the time. It's hard to do business in Kauai County. Mm, mm, mm. Share your experience and tell me what do you see as a fault and that what could be maybe changed or streamlined to make the county more welcoming to business because we, we had so many business go out of business because of COVID. We're gonna have to find some replacement. Yep, yep. Okay. yep. If they wanna go away from tourism, the mom and pop operation, it has to be the pillars of our communities, right? But because it's, uh, like I said, some people have mentioned, it is so unfriendly. What would you do if elected to yep. make it more friendly? Yep, yep. Uh, I love that question. Real quick, people are asking in the comments, where is the food distribution? The food, di food distribution on Thursday is going to be at Vedina Stadium. Starts at 10 o'clock, but people lining up at 6 in the morning. So, I, I mean, it, we know the need is there. 
Bedina Stadium, 10 o'clock is officially when started. But I'm not trying to say wait for four hours, but I'm telling you somebody, people show up there and I'm like at eight o'clock setting up with everybody. So um, it's uh, 10 o'clock at Bedina Stadium. Uh, uh, Saturday, there's another one. Um, if you're wanting to get more information on, on all the food distributions, go to hawaiifoodbank.org um, and they'll list it all there. Okay, Charlie, the biggest challenge for small businesses off the start is the building process. Like literally going through the building process of if it's a local place like this, it takes months for permits. Most businesses no start with like 50 grand to just cruise and pay rent and then like hopefully build your place and then hopefully go to business. That's the number one barrier. The second barrier is hard because what people don't understand as not busy, if you don't own a business, we get taxed twice, okay? You get the sales tax from what we sell you, but then we also pay the GE ta GET tax after we sold you. Do, I don't know if you understand, I gotta pay a tax again on the thing that I just sold you. So that's one of the biggest challenges um, that people don't super understand on the, the small business. So on the county side, it, the, the biggest challenge is to streamline that building process and making sure that we're not holding up businesses that need to innovate, need to change, to do, to make new things, because uh, that's the part where, where we gotta innovate. I mean, that's the county, like you hold that county, you know, that, and if you don't let go and you start creating more efficiencies, you're just gonna keep going down and we cannot recover. Oh, we got like one more minute, shucks. No, one more question. Okay, go, go, go. Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, the next uh, question. I, I feel so much better talking to you guys. Oh, I was so mad earlier. Uh, oh, no, 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 it's okay. But uh, this is uh, the next question. Mel, take it away, Mel. Ask him the question. <laughs> um, the housing situation on Kauai is, is horrific. Uh, I'm just going to, real quick, because you get about 30 seconds left. What you know? What do you consider affordable? Is a hundred hundred forty percent of median affordable? Is a hundred twenty percent of median affordable, or is a hundred percent of median income affordable? What did you consider, in layman's terms, affordable? <laughs> Your lay he, layman's terms, AMI makes no sense to anybody. So, <laughs> the number that we're the sweet spot we're trying to look for is between two hundred thousand and 500,000, okay? That's the sweet spot. Like, if you can build homes, well, and not just homes, guys, with diversifying the housing stock is one of the ways that we can get some of these uh, more affordable homes, uh, like tiny homes, condos, apartments. Um, I'm not saying only build that, I'm just saying add that onto the type of things. Okay, so sorry, sorry. But okay, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm yeah. saying? You I gotta be on. fair, I gotta be fair yeah. to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, but hey. Addison, thank you very much for spending the time with us. Um, work hard, my friend. Work hard. Keep keep that passion. Keep that passion. You know, nothing wrong with passion. Nothing nothing wrong. You know, it's one thing about this show. We do not swear. I do not swear. <laughs> the passion is real, man. Nothing wrong with that, buddy. Keep it up. Work hard. Good luck, my friend. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care, buddy. Aloha. Who? Who? Well, you know, tonight, all the candidates, I have to say, they, again, I'll say it again, from the last time during the primary to now leading up to the general, they really did their homework. They went into their communities. They found out what the hotspots were. And taking that, that phrase from Addison, they learned where the sweet spots were and they delivered on it. That's that's what I notice in these candidates tonight, as well as last night. Well, you, you know what I, I I'm sure you saw in some of the comments where people that didn't know the candidate before tonight. Yes. Um, we're gonna support them, uh, you know, and, and that's what is this is not about name recognition. This isn't about uh, you know because your father went school with that guy's father, or whatever, all of that stuff. You know, elections are where you as a voter. Can it still change in government? That's the only way. Yeah, that's the only way. You can go hold signs and yell and scream and block roads and all of that. Yeah, that, that really doesn't get you much. 
But this is where you get this opportunity every two years to select your leaders, the county level, state level, national level. So you got to vote, you know, you got to vote. And just don't go vote for the sake of voting. Vote after you do your due diligence and learn about the candidates in all the races. We try to bring this to you guys because it's an important race. And we're hoping that uh, you guys enjoy the, the dialogue. And uh, we're not done yet. We still get two more nights. Like I said, tomorrow night we'll have Dr. Elder ready um, because the council has a, has a forum of their own. Um, but Thursday we come right back. Thursday we come right back with uh, Thursday night we have Arrow Kanashiro, Luke Evslin, and Billy DeCosta. And on Friday, we have Kipukai, Koli'i, Mason Chalk, and Bernard Cavallio. So, uh, you, you know what these uh, candidates have shown? Remember, we had this discussion some months ago. You know, we're trying to find out, you know, we're trying to keep everybody safe during COVID, right? So we've been asking very, very simple questions. Both of those that's in places that can make a decision. And especially those who are elected, right? And what it is, what's it's apparent, very, very apparent, is this year more than ever, we got a lot of lip service. And I hate to say it, but uh, you know, I, I never thought I would ever experience it. But this year more than ever, we have experienced a lot of lip service. So what this, what this is allowing me to see is how well, you know, through their passion of what they're talking about. It doesn't, you know, they may not know it now, but you know that desire, it's like a soldier, right? You say you want to go and fight. Okay, now's your chance. You're going to get some soldiers that go and say, nah, that's okay. I'm going to stay on, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay on the tank. Then you're going to get some soldiers that say, hey, you know what? I'll go for it. And if I step on that mine, I step on that mine. But you know what? At least I'm going to die trying, right? And that's, that's what I see. I, I, you know, this year more than ever, a lot of lip service, but the, these candidates are pretty damn passionate. And, and, and that's the difference I see. That's the difference I see. I think genuine, you know, genuine. I think this, this whole pandemic has, it's almost like after the hurricane where people, you know, remember after the World Trade Centers got bombed uh, or got blown up, you know, the everybody thought, everyone would be afraid to go join the military, but the recruitment was, was record-breaking. Everybody wanted to go help. Everybody wanted to go help the, their country. I think we see that in politics as well. When you see a lot of these people, these are passionate, genuine, sincere people. Everybody we've heard so far has been genuine. They want to help, and they want to help bring Kauai back, and and uh, it, it's, it's, it's good to see. I mean, you know, I've I've seen a lot, and um, I'm really pleased with. Uh, it's just gonna be tough to pick seven, you know. It's gonna yeah. be tough to pick seven, but you know they, they got to work out. They got to work hard. They got to get their message out. They got to communicate with everybody that they can, and uh, and just see. That's what this forum does. This forum allows them to to be themselves for 15 minutes. You know, typical forums. You go up there. You they ask you a a question you get two minutes to answer and you got to hurry up and this you, you you can share you can talk and and be yourself and the people can actually when you when you have that 15 minutes of time people can actually figure out if you're full of it or if you're genuine i i just happen to believe every single one of them so far has been extremely genuine so yeah, you know what's unlike, also what's good to know is that with a county council like this Honolulu, I know it's it's different because they have districts, right? And they run for council. Mm -hmm. For Kauai, it's like every position is at large, nonpartisan. Okay, so it's like every everything is at large. You'll notice that if somebody is very very passionate, it doesn't matter who they work with. They ask you, please vote for who you want to see in this office but vote right across, meaning, you know, take up all seven votes, correct? You have that opportunity here on Kauai. What I cannot stand is when guys block vote. You know, the young candidate, the candidate say, hey, just vote for me, throw away your other six. 
then you know you know that tells me right the person has a god-given right to vote and utilize that and he just threw all of that away doesn't make sense that's why when i see these candidates i can hear them talk about how they feel about the other candidates and that is hey they can work with them and that's good you see that passion whoever it is they can get together and work it i like to see that i've never saw it before I'm, I'm going to be very, very honest. I never saw it before, but I see, I, I may have seen a touch of it, but this time I see a lot of it. And that is what I like. I mean, I really like that. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited uh, for this group, a group of candidates, but you, you know, you it's not over. It's not over yet because we got uh, two more nights of it. Right. Yeah. Two more nights. Six more candidates. We got six more candidates. Yeah. I, I did want to touch on this real quick, and then we'll end. The um, there, there will be some charter amendments on the uh, on the election as well, and we want to dedicate a night to talk about some of these charter amendments so that people don't go to the ballot or get their ballots and just leave them blank, you know. And then we'll talk about that when we have it. But we got some important things on the charter amendments, like removing the requirement for the county engineer to be an engineer. <laughs> Listen, it's going to be worded in a way that it'll look like. Hoy, hoy. Um, it's it's going to appear like it's it, it's it's okay, but it's not okay. County engineer needs to be an engineer. The other thing too is um, the districting. When you when you have districting, and I can I can speak from experience, the other islands have districting. What happens is you start putting council members against council members. You, you cannot, you, they fight for their district and that's all they fight for. So don't get, don't get um, bamboozled by this. We need districting on Kauai. It is my own personal opinion. You know, we, you, you, you as, a, as a resident of Lihui can work with a council member from anywhere, any seven. You only need four votes to get anything done. But if you have districts, you stuck with one. So, you know, be careful about those charter amendments, about districting, uh, and ask any of the councils that have districting, they'll tell you they wish they didn't have it because it just creates this automatic um, divider because they're all fighting for that small chunk of the pie. So anyway, we'll talk about the charter amendments, Charlie, because hey, I think you, it's you critical. Know. You just said about the charter amendment that they're trying to remove the engineer that you take well, away. They're trying, to yeah, they're trying to remove the requirement that the county engineer be an engineer. Okay. Doesn't it sound familiar? Remember we had a doctor that didn't have a doctor's degree. Wasn't one a doctor. Did, did, yeah. 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 Same yeah. Thing. yeah. You know, like PhD, you know, you know, let's be let's be honest. You can put just say, hey, the people that do it right, they'll say like Charles Iona, PhD. Or if I'm a doctor, it says Dr. Charles Iona. But they won't say the name and just says he's a doctor. And then everybody, it's just like you're a doctor of what? A zoology. Okay, so you hang out with gorillas. Okay, so you know, I drink with them every weekend. So what? What's the difference? <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll have a we'll dedicate a special uh, a night to go over the amendments because I think it's vital that you guys uh, know exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, charter is not something you change every election. I mean that's the charter is like your constitution for the county, and uh, you know they're gonna tell you that they're having a hard time fill the uh, engineer's position. That's why they gotta take away the requirement. C can you imagine the county attorney not having to be an attorney? or the prosecuting attorney not having to be a prosecutor or the chief of police not having to be a police officer. And you know what? It's almost like going into a surgical procedure. They just insert the gas into you. You go in la la land because you're going to do a colonoscopy only to find out that your doctor is from Wayne's Plumbing. <laughs> right? You and your plumber. Point exactly, Charles. <laughs> My point exactly. Anyway, tomorrow night, guys, don't forget, 
don't forget, Dr. John Alderetti will be talking about, back to COVID, we'll be talking about some potential solutions, options for us here in Koi and other counties to do a second test. And uh, we'll be here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So with that, Hallie Ho, Aloha. We love you guys. God bless. See you guys tomorrow.